Today I'm going to talk about uh, catalysis, industry, automated. Of course, I have workflows to, to include. And uh, it is the title of my talk is Revolutioni Revolutionizing Catalysis Industry Through Automated multi scale Modeling and Active Exploration Space. So um, before this, I would like to say a few words about SCM. So on Monday, somebody asked me what is, what is SCM. So I just want to say a little bit about it. SCM is a private company uh, uh, that uh, created, used to be famous for a code called ADF, created during the 80s. Uh, it's uh, very good to calculate, uh, of course, the DFT properties, but uh, now we have a lot of different things. So the, all the history started in the, in the 70s with uh, Professor Barnes and Ziegler in, uh, in this, uh, during this time. So they created the code uh, AMOL, or uh, later on it was called ADF. But uh, in the, uh, after some time, they, uh, so they created a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, applications in, in DFT and, uh, and chemistry. And during the uh, 80s, in a combination with several companies like Shell, uh, Axel, Unilever, uh, they finally became independent in the, in the 90s. So now it's a completely independent company, and during the, in 2010, so they created uh, so, uh, things that now we call uh, engines like uh, DFTB, React FF, FF, Cosmo, RS, uh, and finally, at the end of uh, in 2018, they scale, uh, started a multi-scale processes, to study multi-scale processes, in particular in a project called the Reaxpro, which is the center of my talk, uh, where we collaborate a lot with BAS, SF, uh, Dow, Shell, and so, and so on. So currently, uh, we are, so in 2022, we were 24 people, uh, in many, and we have many academic collaborators in the European network, and so on. Uh, in this year, we are almost 30, and so on, so the company is, uh, is growing well. So the, the code is, has been uh, involved in several articles, more than uh, almost 5,000 uh, articles and uh, patents during all this time. So uh, this is uh, the SCM team celebrating uh, the 25th uh, year during 2020. So it's the, when I arrived to the company. So after that, we got the, the pandemic problem, but <laughs> that's it. So nowadays, uh, the Amsterdam, uh, so the code is not, uh, called ADF anymore, now it's called AMS, uh, AMS. Uh, so <laughs> they, they made um, a huge rebranding a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I don't remember well, because now uh, the code is uh, involving a lot of different things uh, from the molecular DFT level up to fluid dynamics. So we have uh, ADF, uh, periodic DFT, like uh, with uh, engines, band, quantum espresso, tie binding, QMMM, force fields, kinetic, Monte Carlo, and so on. Of course, we have a really uh, nice uh, graphical user interface. We also offer uh, everything with uh, accessing by Python scripts. Uh, also, we have several tools like parametrization that allows you to train uh, different reacts, uh, uh, force field or force fields or neural networks. Uh, and we also have what we call the AMS driver that basically takes care of all the molecular dynamics and pest exploration using all these tools that we have on this side. Uh, we have QMMM and, and, and so on. So of course the company also creates uh, several collaboration in particular with the European Union based on research and training. This is a whole history of all of them. And again, here I have uh, the Reacts Pro, the one I'm gonna, I've been involved during all this year. Uh, all these years, and that is uh, really close to finish. And uh, so I just want to say that it's really nice if somebody is interested to work with us. So we collaborate uh, con academic, with academic groups, developing codes. Uh, they can provide the code and then know how algorithms they set and so on. So we normally focus on uh, usability, performance, long-term maintenance and support. That is very, pretty important. And we integrate and distribute the code in several times. We also develop uh, new, new, new algorithms and tools uh, uh, supporting those. Uh, for the academic developers, it's important because they get increased visibility and outreach, citations, software licenses, uh, etc. 
And of course, something important, they keep the intellectual property. Uh, so as I said before, we have uh, several uh, things that, that we call the agents, uh, like ADF, BAND, uh, DFT, RxFF, and so on. And we also have exter this external part that gives you the option to include any other program. If you have a, a tool that is able to generate energies, forces, we can include it uh, in directly. And we can start using all the molecular dynamics components that we, we have, best exploration, and so on. So there are two ways to integrate new codes, like uh, using just uh, files, writing your geometry and your energies and forces there. Or if you want to reduce the overhead in these uh, uh, files changing, we also have a, what we call the pipe interface that communicate both programs uh, just using memory. So it's really easy to integrate any other code uh, here if uh, you really are interested in it. Uh, just to, uh, a few comments here. We have three ways to interact with the program. The, um, uh, the uh, typical input files, a graphical user interface, and uh, Python scripts using our library plans. Okay, that's uh, enough for this part. So coming back to the main topic of, the, of my talk. So uh, everything is uh, around the React Pro project. It's an European uh, project uh, in the uh, Horizon 2020, coordinated by SCM, but it, it involves several companies, several institutions, uh, like you, the ones that you can see here. But uh, uh, on this side of, uh, of the slide, I would like to uh, show what is the real aim of this project. So basically, what we all want to do is uh, uh, get uh, bigger systems with longer time scales. Uh, starting from the molecular scales up to the reactor, real reactor uh, scale. So the idea of the project was to basically integrate these four codes uh, in a simple, transparent way uh, to be able to go from here up to there just with a single script. So that is, uh, it's like a dream, but I think that we were able to, to do it at least with a simple example. Um, so AMPS uh, is one of our tools that basically gives you, uh, and, and in this context, give us the energies and forces that we need. Uh, E.ON is a software package uh, containing several algorithms, uh, primarily to model evolution of atomic scale systems over long time scales, that is the name E.ON. Uh, we can f find there are several uh, algorithms like uh, replica dynamics, hyperdynamics, kinetic Monte Carlo, basic hoping. The software is a collaboration between the Henkelman and Johnson Research Group. Unfortunately, Professor Henkelman is not here, but he is in, at IPAM. SACROS <laughs> uh, is uh, the software package for simulating uh, molecular phenomena on catalytic surfaces. Basically, uh, it allows us to describe absorption, distortion processes, surface diffusion, and react, uh, reactions on heterogeneous. Uh, systems. SACROS is developed by a team of scientists at UCLA in the UK, uh, led by the, uh, uh, Dr. Mikhail Stamatakis. And the last part is catalytic foam that allows uh, to uh, get the solutions for the Navier-Stock equations for complex geometries uh, uh, or complex reactors. So it's uh, developed in, uh, in the multi-scale catalysis group uh, in uh, the Politecnico di Milano. So, this is the, what we wanted to do at the beginning. So here is uh, the general idea in more a more specific way. So the, we should start with a simple geometry. Just imagine that you have a surface and you put one molecule on top, and let's see what happens. So the program should be smart enough to, to give us, to uh, calculate the energies in a complex energy landscape. So by uh, uh, several hundred thousands, maybe millions of evaluations of those functions, we should be able to generate the reaction network associated, and also the binding sites uh, where the molecule gets attached. That should be the first step. Once we have this information ready, we should use it in SACROS to generate a single point in this second uh, uh, landscape. It's like the uh, reaction rates landscape, uh, or two lower frequencies. Uh, so if you change the pressure, for example, uh, of one of the reactants and the temperature, you, you change the production rate. So the idea now is that catalytic foam should again evaluate hundreds, thousands, or maybe millions of times this function in order to get a single point uh, to solve the Navier-Stokes equations in this, uh, at this level. 
So uh, since AMS, uh, AMS uh, 2022, uh, we, we uh, ship in our distribution Eon and Sacros. Eon is uh, integrated at the code level, it's fully transparent for the user. Uh, uh, so it's uh, integrated in the code, so we, in a tool that we call the PES exploration. And Sacros is uh, still independent, but we, it's uh, ported in the, in the whole program. Uh, coming back to the workflows that we are really care about here is uh, everything is connected through uh, through Python scripts. Uh, the main connection is uh, based on PLAMS that uh, you can see it as uh, some kind of competition with uh, Python. <laughs> uh, the, the philosophy is the same, uh, and but the different uh, important differences that we can discuss another moment. And the second part, how to integrate PySacros uh, and Catalytic Foam is ADP is the it's another so, uh, open source, uh, source code uh, developed by our uh, friends uh, in Milano that uh, created a machine learning interface uh, for these two components. So let's talk about the first, uh, the first step. How can we go from the structures up to the reaction networks and, uh, and the um, binding sites? So as Aurora gave us a beautiful, beautiful talk, so I, I like your words saying that uh, uh, this is uh, it's a lie, that you know, that this beautiful image of an energy landscape actually is a super horrible thing with uh, thousands and edges and points. And uh, for example, in this uh, reaction network, uh, it looks uh, quite uh, uh, simple. We already have more, almost 3,000 local minima, and there are a lot of different connections. This is for the molecular, for the molecular case. So uh, something that we normally, uh, uh, that we have troubles uh, with surfaces is that, uh, or in general, that, that the, you use uh, human brains to, to scan these surfaces that you include a, a bias in the results. So to, you actually uh, define it from the beginning, the reactions that you want to take uh, uh, take from, but uh, the idea is to remove those uh, uh, those human components. But unfortunately, most of the calculations are super expensive. The f calculation of frequencies, you need the second derivatives of everything, so we need to do something with this. In the field of uh, catali heterogeneous catalysis, it's even worse. So for this reaction, it's just oxidation of CO and platinum. We have a super complex uh, reaction network with more than 100 local minima and almost 600 transition states. So, uh, and here's where, so in the case, for example, the surface is modified by the presence of the substrate. So uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, completely uh, hard. So uh, that's why we started using the we designing this this space exploration. So in at SEM we also need to take care of uh, make a simple software easy to use for every. So the idea is you don't, you don't need to be a, an expert on the field to run these kind of calculations. So for example, for this space exploration, basically you just need a simple block in in the input file, uh, define the job, the number of expedition and explorers. I'm gonna say uh, in a little bit uh, what is this what it means. But uh, for those who are so familiar with E.ON, the, the, the jobs that we are integrated in AMS are process search, basic hoping, saddle search, not elastic band, molecular dynamics, and parallel replica. You can use uh, all the E.ON's codes from here. And we also develop our own uh, part related with the landscape refinement. So if you have a, a landscape calculated uh, UFF level or DFTB, you can uh, improve it at the DFT level. Uh, and also, once you have these energy landscapes, you can extract the binding sites from there that we need for the next step in the in the in the microkinetic model. So I'm just going to say a few words about uh, the process search. is uh, the most uh, I don't know is the simple one that we or the, the 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 one that we used to use more. Uh, the process search, for example, is one of the Eons method. Uh, the idea basically is. Uh, you have uh, you have to start from the from a local minimum, and from there you have certain number of explorers. Here we have three, so they just start following the um, in the minimum mode in a random direction, and trying to they try to localize uh, the transition states uh, uh, close by. So, for example, here we have three uh, explorers, and two of them they just fail. They just went to 
some weird direction, and one of them uh, succeed in localizing a transition state. So once the transition state is located, uh, we just reconstruct both reactants and products following the uh, minimum, uh, so the, the RC, the reaction, the reaction direction or the imaginary vibration uh, frequency. Uh, so then we just uh, in, include uh, that uh, that state in a, in our database, and we start the next expedition. And from there, that expedition, we start again uh, three explorers trying to do the same, and final maybe one of those is going to locate another transition state and reconstruct uh, uh, the reactants, uh, the reactants and products. So at the end, with all this information, we create this that we call the energy landscape, but this is actually the uh, reaction profile that includes the local minima and transition states. And uh, for our uh, heterogeneous catalysis part, we also need to calculate the fragments. So you, we just calculate the, uh, the infinite separated configuration for the substrate and surfaces. And this is what we call the fragmented states. Uh, so with this information, this is a simple example of the uh, PES exploration. This is the input file that you need. Is uh, you need an initial uh, configuration, which is a local minimum, and the play, uh, for the PES exploration, just uh, the job that you need. In this case, process search, 500 expedition, four explorers. All the explorers and expeditions can run in parallel in HPC uh, uh, components. We we can scale this super easy to hundreds of cores. And if it's needed, uh, and for this particular case, we use a very simple uh, engine, the Mopac. It's one of the codes that we have uh, supported, supported there. So for this example, uh, this is the the reaction network uh, published in this uh, in this paper. So if you run this code in my in my laptop, it takes uh, something like 30 minutes, and you get this. This is directly a snapshot from our graphical user interface. And you can see that uh, at least to, at the MOPAC level of theory, we can catch uh, most of the, of the local minima and the transition states, except for this one that is, uh, for some reason, uh, unstable at this level of theory. So another example that I would like to, to share is uh, the splitting of water and rutile, uh, so titanium dioxide, 110. So uh, again, the idea is just put the molecule on top of the surface and let the program run and see what, what, can, what we can get. Uh, there, uh, I have uh, an animation. I, I, I expect that it works. Uh, So this is our graphical user interface. Here you just have to define the task. In this case, it's space exploration. There you just define the process search as a job, the number of expedition, in this case uh, five, and the number of explored is four. Uh, here included a, a fixed position for the surface. The surface is uh, frozen just to speed up uh, the calculations uh, for illustration purposes. And once you have that, that's all what, that we need. You just run the file. Uh, here you have uh, this. In principle, you can run the calculations uh, remotely in, the, in, in any HPC infrastructure, and you can monitor the, the results in your local machine uh, in real time. So for example, here you see that there is, at the beginning, there's only one state. Now it automatically detected uh, two transition states. Uh, if we wait a little bit, uh, uh, we are going to get more, uh, more transition states. So you can make it a little bit nicer, just changing the units and so on. Um, at some point, the calculation is going to finish. This calculation was done with, uh, with a ReactFS4 field, so it's, uh, it's super fast. And here we, have, here we get. So this, in this case, we have uh, four different reactions. The first one is, uh, uh, is, I cannot see it really well here, but I think it's, uh, uh, okay, yeah, it's a migration of the water molecule. The second one is also a migration of the water molecule. And the third one is the one that we are interested in, which is the splitting of the water molecule. And the last one is uh, the diffusion of the OH group independently. So once uh, you have that, you can remove all the noise that you, that you need. Uh, Maybe can speed up a little bit. Uh, 
Ok, no. <laughs> yeah, basically you can just remove the states that you need. And once you define the states that you need, you can start a new calculation from there. And that's it. Uh, let me see. Okay, you can make the, the, the figure nicer. You can move the states all around. And you can all, of course, uh, de define the, the, the direction that you want to see the molecules. And that's it. Okay, so, uh oh. So let's go back to this part. Okay. So the next thing that we need is the binding sites that basically is uh, an object that we construct from the energy landscape. Uh, this is just a simple example where you have the cluster and two uh, adsorbed uh, atoms on top of it. So where the atoms are adsorbed, we define the, the, the binding sites. And in this case, uh, we have a transition state that connects these two structures. Basically, one of the atoms is moving from one point to another. So the, po the point where these atoms are absorbed, they are the binding sites. But additionally, we need these links. So if there is any uh, transition state connecting these two configurations, we include a link in the, in the binding sites. So this is an example for the CO, um, for the cobalt cluster, uh, for a cobalt cluster with an addition of a, uh, with an additional cobalt, uh, cobalt atom. So we already calculated the energy landscape uh, for this case, and we need to calculate the binding site. Uh, for this case, let me try to show you another, another movie. So. We have uh, our N a reference uh, system, and for the, our reference system, we just change here the, the job for binding sites. Then we can load the energy landscape from our previous calculation. You can see that uh, all this is the list of local minima and transition states. You can uh, remove the ones that you don't like or, or whatever, and then just execute, uh, execute the calculation. So this is in the queue system. And once you finish, yeah, there we are. We have all the binding sites for the molecule, for the molecule that uh, where the, in this case, the, this, the add, uh, atom is, uh, is diffusing. So also for this, uh, for each binding site, you can uh, include uh, uh, new structures absorbed at that point that could be uh, very interesting for system like I know, uh, biological molecules where you can add, or even for surface where you can start growing uh, a layer of molecules or, or something like that. Um, let's go back to start from the current slide. Okay. As I said before, we also have a, a Python interface to, to do all this. So you just have to load the molecule, uh, specify the settings of the calculations using this settings object, and submit the job. So the same, you can just use exactly the same input file to submit it in a, in a queue system. Uh, and in the, in the line, in the command line that you specify for the alarm, you can specify the number of tasks, the number of uh, processors, number of nodes, and the code is going to be executed there. So the program is uh, smart enough to distribute the charge, uh, which calculations should be uh, first or so on, depending on the cost, uh, the estimated cost we have for that. We can also uh, make uh, workflows. Uh, so this is just a representation of a workflow that I, we call the first neighbor reaction, uh, but actually we are working now in a probably for AMS 2024. We're going to have a graphical user interface to connect different uh, different steps uh, for uh, DFT, for variation of frequencies, space explorations, and so on. So during the last uh, year, uh, SCM has uh, made a, a huge effort to make an output file at the same level of the input file. Now we are going to have. Uh, 
perfectly describe it, uh, the meaning of each element in our output file. So in that way, all these connections are going to be uh, super easy to be interconnectable uh, with the different parts of the code. Uh, okay, I'm not going to go in, in details of it, but for example, for oxygen uh, on platinum, we can calculate the single body mechanism that is just start with a single molecule, and this is the the, uh, the energy landscape that we, or the reaction the reaction network that we get. Basically, the oxygen gets a split, uh, so these two uh, transition states are the diffusion of the molecule on top of the surface, and the other set of uh, reactions are the splitting, uh, where the oxygen atoms go to FCC bridge position or FCC, 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 HSP, and so on. From this uh, uh, energy landscape, you can uh, create uh, the irreducible symmetry binding sites, and using symmetry operators, you can get the, the, uh, the whole structure uh, for the kinetic Monte Carlo model. So from this, uh, you can use SACROS to create, uh, uh, basically, uh, run the dynamics and calculate the production rate of CO, in this case, as a function of time. You can see all the, uh, how the species are distributed on top of the surface and, uh, and get different uh, uh, results from there. Where we are really interested in the reaction rates, that is what we need in this case. So just with everything that I said before, now we have this single point on this, on, on this landscape, and now we need to be able to, to go to the next step. So PySacros, that's why we created PySacros. It's a uh, free software, it's available in GitHub. Uh, we have some base components that uh, uh, helps you to create the Sacros input files. Basically, it's a relation one-to-one -to, -one to the objects that uh, Sacros uh, has. Uh, again, it is uh, created on top of PLAMS. You have all the properties that you can execute it in a queue system using XPC and so on, parallel execution. And very recently, in uh, AMS 2023, you created the extended components that basically helps you with uh, uh, execution of multiple SACROS calculations uh, with uh, interdependencies. Uh, so for example, if you just need to scan certain property, like the partial pressure of the reactants, you can submit it, all of them in a single script, and you don't need to take care of the all HPC configuration. Uh, something important here is the calculation of the steady state. Yeah. Sir, it's very interesting uh, functionality here. Would you mind el uh, elaborate a bit more? How do you handle all those uh, workflow, like uh, underneath? How do you parallelize <coughs> how function, you know, how they function, and for example, like a yen is seen from earlier, once you do those jobs, many of those uh, energy landscape search, right, including this. So how do you talk to the scheduler in the uh, HPC? So for the energy landscape exploration, that's uh, in, uh, this MPI connections. So uh, inside AMS. Outside AMS, like in, in, in PySacros, uh, it uses, uh, uh, triads or multiprocessing uh, uh, soup executions uh, in the depending of the number of processors or nodes that the user uh, defined at the, at the beginning. Is uh, more or less what you mean? <laughs> so if each job will finish at a different time, so how do you manage the resource? Uh, so with, uh, with PLUMS, uh, uh, PLUMS just have a, has a, a queue, uh, an internal queue, and it's submitted to the to the to the queue system. In this case, it's LORM. So once the, uh, once you have enough processors available, it submits the next uh, the next calculation, and uh, you can define dependencies in the input file, well, in the Python script. So you can say uh, execute this calculation, then this one, but for the second one, you, I need the results from the previous one. So you can define this kind of uh, of dependencies at the Python level. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, and for, for the specific case of the steady state, you need to uh, uh, evolve the system for, cer for certain time, uh, but at some point uh, the state, so the system haven't, get, haven't reached the steady state. So you need to stop the simulation, calculate the, 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 the production rates, and then run the calculation for longer, verify that it changed or not, and uh, and continue this this loop until the until the uh, the reaction rates uh, get converged. So, 
but that is automatically uh, administrated by the uh, sorry for the sacros state 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 job uh, in this uh, in this sacros part. Uh, this is a simple example. Uh, we can use this RKF loader to load all the results from the uh, for, for, from AMS, so the energy landscape, and all this energy landscape, uh, so I mean the energy landscape and the, lat, uh, and the lattice is automatically transformed in the, the PySacros uh, objects. So we can load all the system just with a single line, then define the settings uh, like, of the calculation, like temperature, pressure, molar fractions, and so on, the times for the dynamics, and then again, submit the job uh, in the HPC system. Uh, we also have the same uh, part in the in the user graphical user interface, so uh, we can do exactly the same uh, at this level. So there is uh, one super nice example in the in our in, in our web page that illustrates how to go uh, from the atomic level up to the up to the the Monte Carlo part. So with a single script, we're going to start with a uh, with the molecular geometry and gets this uh, this simulation where you see that the uh, platinum surface get uh, poisoned by the presence of uh, CO on the on the surface uh, also for our last release uh, we have uh, several examples uh, these ones uh, just illustrate how to get the steady state conditions uh, we also have the problem that you have uh, two different time scales and you need to to rescale the kinetic constants, uh, uh, otherwise your calculations are going to take like months. Now, if you rescale the kinetic constants with some uh, smart way, you can reduce the calculation to a few hours or so on. So these examples are contained here. I'm happy to discuss that if somebody is interested. But in particular, the advanced examples are are, are very interesting. The first one is uh, shows, as I said, the connection from the atomic level up to the uh, uh, up to this Monte Carlo level, and the second one uh, shows how to go from the uh, Monte Carlo level to the next one, which is the continuous fluid dynamics. So basically, here uh, uh, you are going to see a system, a machine learning model that gives you which points you need to calculate, the minimum number of points that you need to calculate in order to get a good fitting for the, trans for the turnover frequencies. So uh, here is a, uh, it's the same figure than there. So these points are the machine learning proposed points for these uh, 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 reaction rates as a function of the molar fraction of CO. And uh, the system automatically decides which points to calculate and also creates a fit for the, for the values in between. So that's what we need for the next step because it's, uh, we need millions of evaluations of this, uh, 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 of this machine learning model to, to be able to run the, the continuous fluid dynamics part. So that takes me to the last point, that is the, uh, the catalytic foam. Now we have this with a surrogated model or the machine learning model that we can evaluate uh, um, um, thousands of millions of time and we can start running the continuous of, uh, flow dynamics. So this is an example that we have. Uh, we hope that it's going to be ready for the next release. So basically, we use catalytic foam uh, to solve the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, and, and we use the, our surrogate model to take care of the reactivity part uh, of the model. In this case, we have a tubular reactor, just two inner walls and uh, the reactants uh, come inside from, from this side uh, with a gas velocity of 0.1 uh, meters per second, and we expect that uh, some uh, CO2 is generated as, after the flow goes through this part. So this center part is a pellet, a spherical pellet of platinum, that uh, will, is where the reaction is actually going to happen. Uh, the temperature is uh, more uh, 673 Kelvin when atmosphere uh, of pressure. So in this example, it's complicated because the, the way to create the mesh is already a challenge. <laughs> so uh, this simple one can be made by hand, but if you really want to use the, the ones that the companies are interested, you need to use uh, 3D model uh, programs, I don't know, like Blender or so on. Yeah. Just for this example, I mean, you can calculate velocity profiles at a certain point within the... Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, well, you can you can get the values of uh, for all fields like uh, um, velocity, pressure, uh, composition of the mixture, uh, and as a function of time and, and space. And uh, also, several companies actually they they cre they manage their their own pellets. The, so the just the the shape of the pellet is important. So what they normally do is is uh, they they create the reactor in real in real life. They scan it, and with that scan, uh, they start the simulation. So after that, you can optimize what is the uh, what is the right value for the gas velocity, the better composition of the mixture, and so on. So we expect to have at least this simple example that concludes our whole workflow. And uh, this is a, a simple example of that. I hope it works. Yeah, this is how the CO2 is generated at uh, as the uh, as the as the reactants get in touch with the with the pellet, so um, more red red is uh, more CO2 and blue is uh, zero for CO2. So at the end you you reach uh, again um, a steady state condition in which you produce certain quantity of uh, of CO2. So the idea now is uh, change the parameters in order to improve the generation of CO2. Uh, and, and that's it. That's the whole story. We were able to create this uh, this workflow. It goes from here up to here. In a, just for a very simple example, <laughs> CO uh, oxidation of CO and platinum. Uh, now I think, I, I, in retrospective, I think that is more like a dream because uh, in this part you get it already stuck. So once uh, the first part we we calculate all the reaction profiles using ReactFF. But then we, we do uh, refinement of the energy landscape using DFT, and that's the end. <laughs> so the, the energy landscape takes like uh, two hours, uh, the calculation, but just the refinement of the DFT using quantum espresso, espresso takes like seven days. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit frustrating, but in principle, it works now for this simple example. But if you want to explore different systems, uh, you need to stop in every point to, to modify the parameters, to tune the, uh, the functional, the convergences, uh, and so on. Uh, but we offer some tools to, to do that, but, uh, it, but you know, it's, it's not the, what we dreamed at the beginning. So you still need uh, an expert in the field of DFT, an expert in the, in the field of uh, Kinetic Monte Carlo, and an expert in the field of continuum flow dynamics. Uh, but we'll see. I hope in the future we can, or somebody else can, can, can make it better. Just uh, to, uh, to say a few words more, uh, that React project also has another, uh, another part. One of them is uh, the developing of this platform. Uh, so I include it just because uh, some of you talk about these days of uh, uh, dockers and uh, marketplaces. Uh, things like that. <laughs> so uh, we all in this project we also develop um, an ontology. So it was uh, really hard. It's just like a common language to specify uh, on a perfectly every element we have in our simulation. So what is the meaning of a reaction? What is the meaning of a transition state? But in different in these three different uh, contexts. So in principle, developing this ontology based on symphony we should be able in the future to create uh, a knowledge graphs that are going to be a key component for something that nowadays is super popular like chat GPT or so on. Uh, but we also use these, uh, these ontologies to store information in, in marketplaces. We also use Nomad to store information. Um, and so the idea here is that the user can uh, interact with the system uh, with uh, web interface uh, using an API, a REST API, and this executes on everything uh, behind the scenes using Dockers, completely isolated for catalytic phones, Sacros, and SEM, and EUN. So they are the experts on this field. I contributed to with my know-how, and, uh, and that's it. And so I just have to say special acknowledgments to I, uh, during the developing of the PES exploration, I interacted mostly with uh, Alejandro and uh, Hannes Johnson. Uh, to, with the Thacros part, uh, Mihai was very supportive, and, uh, and in this part, in catalytic form, Mauro, Mauro and, and Matteo Maestri, they, they helped us a lot. And of course, all the SCM team, that I'm really happy to work there. <laughs>
Um, finally, of course, the money. <laughs> the money coming from the European Union. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.